my man. All right, let me see what this other one. Uh, Spartan Legacy says, it's a sad fact Nick Saban will retire eventually and we need a coach to continue the dynasty. Could Urban Meyer, if he wanted to be the future coach? Uh, no, is the quick answer to that question. But we'll, we'll take on that one a little bit later because I'm going toward who could recruit in this climate, assuming Tom Herman gets fired after the Kansas State game at Texas. He but the Urban Meyer. Now, problem with this is multifaceted. First is, he's actually really good. Like, not actually. He's really good on Fox. Like, say what you want to about everything else. For what his role is at Fox Sports, he's very, very, very good. Right? Everybody likes a football lesson. And everybody likes a football coach on set. And he's... One of the best football coaches of the past 20 years. Okay. But the man chose to retire in large part because the stress of coaching at Ohio State and the stress that it put on his family was too much. He's even got, you know, a little bar and restaurant up there in Columbus. He's having a nice time. It's kind of like Bob Stoops in that way. Why would I want to do what y'all are doing? Why would I want to quite literally take on those headaches once again? There is not enough money in the world right now for me, if I'm Urban Meyer, to take the job at Texas. I can't trust y'all to leave me alone. What are you going to pay me? What, 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 what do I need more money for? You know, I won national championships in Florida. I won national championships at Ohio State. And when I took the job at Ohio State, I took the job saying to my family, I'm going to get to the volleyball games. I'm going to return phone calls. I'm going to put the phone down at dinner time. You can't do that and recruit to Texas. Mm -mm. And football won't tell my body I will kill you. <laughs> I, I feel like that's a, that's a pretty good motivation to not want to work at Texas. But it's true, though. Like, the other part about Texas that's wild is, you know, we've talked about this before, and I think it's starting to make it into the popular discourse finally. Texas had that one stretch with Mac where they were good, right? They had that, that one stretch with Mac Brown where they're good. But outside of that, you got to go back to basically 1969 for the last time that Texas was consistently good and college football was not integrated at the time, okay? Like, Texas still has the distinction and will always have the distinction of being the last all-white college football team to win a national championship, okay? So much so that Daryl Royal admitted to uh, Billy Daugherty at Michigan State that him not recruiting the kids coming out of the Beaumont Triangle had really hurt him with his friends and in recruiting when it came time to recruit black players. So much so that Michigan State had built a national championship team off of talent in the Houston area six years before. Like, I love all of that. I love all of that, right? Houston, like the, the, the program that is Houston, built its entire identity off of dudes like Elmo Wright, dudes that Daryl Royal just would not recruit. And then, you know, Bill Yeoman stumbles into inventing the veer. <laughs> and making an absolute monster at Houston, destroying people in the Southwestern Conference. All right. Then there's this bit. This bit. They've won seven outright conference titles in the last 40 years. Bob Stoops won 10 conference titles in 18 at Oklahoma. What I'm saying here is, when are we going to start treating Texas like we might treat Texas Christian or Ole Miss or Mississippi State, right? When are we going to start treating Texas like Michigan? I mean, we're doing, we're doing that now. Well, we, well you and I, you and I are. Well, uh, us and probably anybody that's listening and whoever will, will watch this later has, has been treating Texas as uh, the team that is not quite back yet. You know, we as we as we said before, like Texas is is exactly as back as they as they as they've classically been. I don't like. I think that you can win at Texas. I, I'm sorry. Theoretically, that's the problem. Is that anybody could theoretically win at Texas because we've looked at their recruiting for the past 20 years. It's been very good. 
uh, there are times when they've had a lot of people get drafted in the first round. It's just that the ex- you have no you have no room to you have no room to fail at Texas, and that's the thing that is so confusing more than anything else is that you don't have any room to fail at Texas. Like, well, people are going to be on your back. It's like ah, you know, we, it's the and it's this is the thing that we talk about all the time. It's like you know you got to win at Texas. I'm like, but why? No, you got to win everywhere. But why do you why are you telling me this? Why is it so difficult to give me some room to? remove some players that I don't want, get some players that I do need, uh, make some changes to my coaching staff, and then put together a program that could potentially give Oklahoma, like, a, a battle, and, you know, and they but, aggregate. But, no, but that's – he did that. Like, allow me to respond to this after I get to the super chat by Alec Azam, which is Matt Patricia to Texas. <laughs> and also uh, and also Alto, I, Alto of high-ranked Texas players – also of hiring Texas players, go elsewhere now. P.S. Again, B.V. ain't going nowhere. Love the show. Brent Venables ain't going nowhere because that's a Clemson fan. Mm. You have to explain the rest of me that. I'm sorry, dog. Uh, and welcome, Coach Pete, to the community as a join as a join member. You can if you're on the desktop, you can go to the subscribe button just below it. It's a join button. You can join up in the channel. It's like 99 cents a month. I make like over 100 videos, so it's less than a penny a month. Anyway, a uh, penny a video. Tom Herman got to be seven and six, win a Texas Bowl, right? So that's bad. That's your first year, okay? Coming off of quite literally a an excellent eighteen month stretch that he stretched into four years and lots of money at Texas. You got to be good enough to play against to beat Oklahoma, right? In 2018, 48, 45 with Kyler Murray quarterbacking. Then you lose to Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship. And you beat Georgia in the Sugar Bowl. You go 10 and 4, which to me is like going 8 and 5, right? More or less. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like you get 10 wins, but four losses is, you're not moving any needles there. And most Georgia fans would tell you that that Georgia team did not care to be in the Sugar Bowl against Texas. They thought they ought to be playing in the college football playoff once again. DeAndre Baker, who won the Paycom Jim Thorpe Award that year, didn't even play in the game. Okay. Now, 2019. You feel like you might have something because you, you're you in that game against LSU. You lose it dramatically. But the better that LSU team got throughout the year, the more likely people were to say, hey, you know who played them close? Who played them well? Texas. But Tom Herman ran a death camp to start August. And a lot of his players ended up getting injured and hurt. And by the time you got to go and try to beat up on Oklahoma, you can't do it. You get sacked nine times with Sam Ellinger. Jalen Hurts announces himself with the gold hat, or as my mama would call it, that ugly hat. Then you proceed to lose to Texas Christian and a Baylor team that was down to the third-string quarterback. And then you get it all together to go beat Utah in the Alamo Bowl, a Utah team that also doesn't want to be at the Alamo Bowl because if they beat Oregon, they're playing in the college football playoff. Instead, they lose to Oregon. Oregon goes to the Rose Bowl. Oregon beats Wisconsin to get the Rose Bowl win. So what I'm saying is they got an opportunity. Or he got opportunities to fail. Because I don't know who else could go 7-6, 10-4, 8-5, and 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 not call that failing in the eyes of Texas. Pun intended. And then this year, you're not, you're not good. In a year where I and quite literally everybody else who had been following Texas were terrified of Texas. Because after going 8-5, and five, you got to blow up your entire coaching staff. Bring in brand new coordinators, brand new schemes. You brought in Mike Yurchis from Ohio State who had run up all these points at Oklahoma State. You brought in Chris Ash who was your partner at Ohio State. Got fired from Rutgers. Also getting the buyout money so you ain't got to pay him all that much money as your defense coordinator. And you have quite literally... The most talented roster in the Big 12. This is your year. And you lost the Red River rivalry in quadruple overtime. You managed to knock off an overranked Oklahoma State in Stillwater. But you dropped the game that you must win against Iowa State to get back to the Big 12 championship at home. Giving up the booty in Austin for the first time since 2010. I graduated high school in 2010. I'm in my 30s. I'm Jesus' age when y'all nailed him to the cross. 
Okay. If I'm Tom Herman, I'm not begging you to buy me out, but I'm not gonna make it. I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna make it hard. Uh, also, Alakazam getting back in here to say, Alto of Good Texas football. Oh, Alt. Alto of good Texas football players don't stay in Texas. Also, also good Texas football players don't stay in Texas anymore. It used to be that way. No, they stay. They go to Texas A&M. They go to Texas Christian. They go to Baylor. They go to Houston. Some of them go to uh, go to LSU, Alabama, Oklahoma, Ohio State. But like, Ohio State I mean, recruits well out of Texas because they win. 